Great. Thank you for that, Juliana. Next, we have Ainsley. Ainsley, what's your question? Where are you from? Hi, everyone. Ainsley from Trinidad and Tobago. My question is, <clears throat> I am taking pumpkin seed oil tablets to, they say it's supposed to grow back here, and I am seeing results. But I'm, am I to be fearful of these concentrated oil capsules? Are they dangerous for us? Just your thoughts well, on it, Julian. Great question, Ainsley. I have not, I've not heard about that specific supplement. What are you taking it for? What's it seem to be helping you with? Oh, pumpkin seed oil. It's, um, it's a capsule and it's supposed to regrow hair. It's the more mm -hmm. natural way than, than using medoxidil and these strange, you know, harsh medicines. And it is working on me. I could actually say Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. But I mean, I mean, for now, I'm not wondering because every every presenter that we're having for, for the series, be wary of oil, be wary of oil. But I'm wondering, can this little oil capsule cause so much damage or throw us I, off? I, I think this is such a great question and I would doubt it. I would love to see the dose and how much. I don't think if it's a capsule, it's not like you're. So when we say limit oil. It's because people are thinking, like I wrote a book, The Vegetarian Diet, about the Mediterranean diet. And people think that if you guzzle olive oil over all of your whatever, hamburgers and French fries and chocolate shakes, you'll be healthy. And oil is not a healthy food. It's a concentrated pure fat. But a capsule form is going to be a little bit amount. I don't know that one specifically. It sounds totally fine. I mean, off the, I don't know. I haven't looked at the research. but So I'm, I'm just giving you my thoughts um, that are just pure, just throwing out my thoughts. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. I can't imagine there's that much oil in there. And if it's helping you I mean, and your diet is really healthy and you're not eating oil in your diet overall, I can't imagine that being anything negative. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Blessings to you. All right. Next we have Wendy. Wendy, what was your question? Where are you from? Hi there. Uh, I'm from Boca Raton, Florida, and I'm a Hippocrates health educator. Um, thank you. I missed most of your presentation. Uh, my question is, is I am definitely overweight. I have a significant amount of weight to lose. I'm 60 and I've put on a lot of weight. I do a lot of the Hippocrates style. I eat a lot of raw food, not all raw food, but anyway, in order to lose a significant amount of weight, I've been told that I need to have protein every few hours, have some protein powder. And uh, so you say no to smoothies. I don't really know what to do at this point. It's just really a struggle. And I, and I need to move more. So I know that. But uh, as far as my eating is concerned, um, I don't know how I'm going to do this. <laughs> Oh, I hope you'll watch back the playback of this because it's all in there. Or you can look at my book, The Choosing Our Diet, because I just like I what I was explaining and not to be too repetitive for everyone that already heard it is that I take exercise away during the weight loss process and my clients lose 0. 0.4 to 0. 0.8 pounds a day of body fat eating whole foods. Eat, I use time restricted eating in a whole food plant based diet, but I would encourage you to either read the book or look through this video because I just kind of I just explained all of that's like a whole a lot of different tools in the armamentarium to help you get there. But, you know, if, if you think about it, why would it be helpful to lose weight to eat all the time? And I was a personal trainer, 25 years I've been a trainer. And it's like, I was saying the same thing and eating every two hours and keeping your metabolism stoked. And it just doesn't make sense if you look at it from, well, if you just think about it, right? The more, if you're eating too much, if you're not losing, you're eating too much. And like I said before, most of my clients are perimenopausal women. And I, every one of them can lose the 0.4 to 0.8 pounds a day if they do it in this very um, meticulous way where you're really like focusing on whole foods, you're working on hunger satiety, um, you're not eating, you know, throughout the day and you're, that's it. And then you're exercising less. So you can do it. You definitely can do it. And just it's, it's the problem is there's so much misinformation out there and everyone eats. So everyone's an expert on food and it becomes overwhelming for most people. So it's hard to navigate all of that. So the reason I wrote this book is because like I said, this is my 25 years of working with people and learning how humans work. And most of the most important things I've learned is all of the humanity and the cognitive behavioral therapy things and the psycho um, 
psychosocial things that we're dealing with day after day that gets in our way. And that's what I put in this book. And that's what the mindfulness techniques are based off of. These are, this is based on the success of thousands of people and I've tracked their rate of loss over time. And I've, it's just really interesting how repeatable and generalizable it is and that you're not broken. You know, we're, we're all, we all function very, very much the same. So I would encourage you to, to check it out. Okay. Thank you so much. I will. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Next. All right. So I'm announcing more hands. So I'll ask you a question now. Um, so I'm a big carbohydrate guy. I like having, you know, my whole grains, my oats and stuff. But um, one thing I, I um, what would steer me away, I got steered away from rice, especially like whole grain brown rice. Is whole grain brown rice as healthy as whole grains like quinoa? That's such a good question. So if you noticed on my six daily threes, there's one very obvious food group missing and everyone asks me why, and it's whole grains. And the reason it's not in the six daily threes as the foods that you're supposed to prioritize is that there's nothing unique nutritionally in whole grains that you can't get elsewhere. So the question is when people ask me, is this good or is this not good? It's compared to what, like, what does that mean? Like, what is the context of your diet? So like you just said, brown rice compared to quinoa, quinoa is probably better because rice we know has arsenic in it. So you don't want to be eating that all the time. I also noticed, again, this is a trend. I'm not saying anything bad about whole grains. They're very healthy. The literature is substantial in all the health benefits and all the wonderfulness of whole grains. But it's again, there's nothing you need in them specifically. And for weight loss, you might as well just, it slows everyone down. It just seems to slow people down on the weight loss process specifically. In terms of health, it's totally healthy diversify your whole grains, have quinoa, have brown rice, have wild rice, have amaranth, have buckwheat, whatever you like, you know, for the variety is good too. But you want to, you want to kind of be careful and, and versify it because of the arsenic specifically for rice. And quinoa has, you know, different, they just all have different nutrients. So it just depends on what, what are you comparing it to? Like, if you said, should I have brown rice or should I have, um, you know, a big salad with beans. I would say have the salad with beans. But I mean, if you have to choose, but usually you don't have to choose. So it depends on why you're asking and, and in what context. But I'm always a fan of diversifying when you're, you know, not in weight loss mode and you're just trying to get more nutrition. I even diversify things like, like my nuts. Like I always, most of my recipes call for cashews as the base because they're so good and creamy and neutral. But then I realized, wait a second, I'm missing out on all these other things like selenium and Brazil nuts or calcium and almonds and Omega threes and the hemp seeds. So I started doing like half of my blender full of the whatever half the um, the the um, I want to say dose, but whatever that is in the recipe for the the quantity of the cashews, and then I do the other nuts and seeds just to get more variety. And I also like I'll shop at different stores to get like my kale from different places, so it's coming from different ground and getting different nutrients. I just like to try to get that. That's where I get my diversity from in terms of nutrition. Um, and like even supplements, like I don't trust supplement company, right. Cause it's, no one's monitoring it. So I buy different, I'll buy different types. So I'll like go through different companies. Cause it's like, you're just kind of like, you know, cause the dose makes a poison. So I like to try to get as much diversity as I can with all those little decisions in the day. Mm -hmm. and, and just to dig deeper, um, on the whole grain topic, should we, avoid, should we avoid a hybridized whole grains like wheat, barley and oats and said, eat quinoa, millet, amaranth buckwheat, teff, and, you know, wild rice, as you said before? You know, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen any research showing any harms of eating those foods. And I haven't really, I haven't seen anything kind of come up, but I haven't really looked for it. So I don't know if I have the right answer to that question. Great. All right. Um, also, I, I, I do drink a lot of coffee sometimes, um, especially when my, when my pre-workout. Um, does coffee impact our health? There are some really great benefits to drinking coffee. If you're not sensitive to caffeine or coffee itself, like some people are sensitive to the, like maybe it's more acidic than other things, um, then there's nothing wrong with having it. And just, you know, know thyself. Again, it's back to know thyself. Like for me, I know at 12 o'clock, no more coffee for me, or I'll be up really late. You know, it's hard for me. But just if you don't have any blood pressure problems and you're not sensitive to it, there's nothing wrong with coffee whatsoever. And also, I, I remember you, you mentioned the Okinawan uh, diet. Um, they also eat, um, you know, they have some animal products in their, in their diet, um, is, is on, on that topic is fish good for us. And is there any proven science one way or another since they eat, um, some fish now and then? This is such a good, important question. And 
there's a lot of considerations when it comes to fish, right? Okay. So first of all, there's some really bad, dangerous things about fish. Like it's a, it's a concentrator of pollutants, right? We've got, we know that there's methylmercury and other metals and PCBs and dioxin and all sorts of impurities, plastics now from the waters because our oceans are so contaminated. Um, there's also ethical considerations, the overfishing concern, the um, eating animals. If you're a vegan for the animals, you're not going to want to, you know, use animals in any way, shape or form. So those are the negatives on fish, but there are some benefits and there's definitely some great science showing that fish is super healthy, nutrient dense, decreases risk for cardiovascular disease. And it's interesting if you look at the big studies comparing the omnivores to the pescatarians, to the vegetarians, to the vegans. And most of the time, the vegans fare the best in terms of mortality or weight loss or BMI, stuff like that. But sometimes the pescatarians do better than the vegans. And so as a dietitian, I can't say fish is horrible for you. I can't say that factually. It's not true. And some people are fine with, it depends on where you're coming from. So as a dietitian, I would say you have to decide for yourself, but definitely if you're comparing fish to a terrestrial animal product, like a, a meat or a dairy or a chicken or anything that comes on land, it's far better to choose fish. But if you're choosing between the, do you have to eat fish to be healthy? No, you can eat a plant-based diet to be healthy and take a microalgae formula. So it depends on your perspective, what, what you're, what you want. Are you what are you doing? What is your goal? And wh why are you making those food decisions? I don't ever want to judge anyone for what they eat. And I also won't tell anyone what to eat, but those are the facts. The facts are, it is, can be absolutely healthy in moderation, small doses because of those other risks, but because all the research seems to conclude that the benefits outweigh the risks, um, except for the ethical risks. If you're not going to eat an animal product, then there's no reason you have to by any means. I know many healthy vegans, but the one thing you do need to be mindful of is to take that microalgae formula to get the EP and DHA that you would get from the fish.